while they're watching to see. This is a country they've literally invaded in Crimea, uh, that they literally um, have their eyes on. And then he doesn't even help them out with the aid. I thought that was really effective, what Adam Schiff said at the end. Senator, are you All right, uh, Senator Amy Klobuchar talking to reporters there outside of the Senate chamber. Want to get a sense of that? You want to respond to uh, what she said there? I do, because if she's interested in truth, here are a couple of inconvenient facts for Amy Klobuchar and her Democratic colleagues. Uh, one, of course, Russia invaded Crimea on the watch of Senator Amy Klobuchar and President Barack Obama. So we don't need to be lectured um, by her on that. Also, inconvenient fact for her, Ukraine got its aid. History, you know, we're all being lectured about history. History will look at you this way. History will say this at this time. History speaks in large swaths and they'll say, someone will say, that's a shame Ukraine didn't get their aid under President Trump. No, actually they did. Oh, well, they got less of it. No, they actually got more of it than they got in the previous administration. They've used it for very important defense apparatus like cyber rifles and javelins. In fact, they're using them, I would think, as we speak against foreign aggressors, including, if not but, especially but Russia. The, one of the arguments that the Democrats made was this specific aid. I completely agree with you. This president has given far more lethal aid than the other president, uh, President Obama, who gave blankets. Having said that, this particular aid, the $391 million, which been approved by Congress, certified by the Defense Department that Ukraine was not corrupt. This president held it up. He releases it after the whistleblower story comes out, after Adam Schiff says he got caught and he had delayed so long that Congress had to pass a new law to release the aid further. Well, that is knitting together, uh, I think, with something well, the that's coincidence. Is clear. Not, you're, no, you're looking at causation, but it could be coincidence. And the reason I say this is White House, the White House was aware of the whistleblower before the report came out. We were aware of that in August. So the whistleblower report may have been made public to the press or, frankly, to the public, but the president lawyers were aware But it hadn't gotten to Congress until just before he released the A. But this is not what Amy Klobuchar and others are saying, Chris. You're, you're too logical for them, frankly, and respectfully. But she's also saying, she's saying that we should have more evidence. They're an argument well, no, no, all but answer along. my question. You're kind of pivoting off it. I'm sorry. No, it. go ahead. Well, my question is, I, I forget the no, exact date, but I think it's September 9th, September 10th, the story breaks. The, now the Democrats know about the whistleblower, are going to begin an investigation, and then on September 11th or 12th, the president releases the aid. You're saying it's a coincidence? Yes. Why wouldn't it be? In other words, well, nobody has presented any evidence that it wasn't, and nobody's presented any evidence that the president ever intended to not have get Ukraine that aid, and in fact, they have. But the other thing they're arguing about is the Ukrainian president wanted, the new president wanted a, a, a meeting in the Oval Office of Important Him. We get requests from every, practically every head of state for meetings, and this gentleman got two meetings. If the vice president has a meeting with you, it's the president having a meeting with you. He's the number two. They got elected together. He had a meeting with the vice president, I believe, in Poland. Then up at Unga, for the whole world to see, he gets a meeting just months after he's sworn into office, uh, uh, two months after the parliamentary elections, about five months after. After his election, he has a meeting with President Trump. We couldn't fulfill all the bilateral requests at UNGA, the same way we can't fulfill them at Davos or the G7, G20, but we fulfilled that request. I think a very important point to make, too, is Senator Klobuchar and others, two things. One is, if she's running for president, she ought to be honest. She actually sh shouldn't even be there. She should be in Iowa because she's already decided how she's going to vote. Wait, wait, she, she said can't. a long time it's ago under she, law. she has to be there. To be there. Well, but let's, let's, let me just make my point. By law, she has to be there, but if she were being honest, as a fact finder and wanting to see the truth, she would tell everybody, look, I've already decided how I'm going to vote. I've said for a very long but time you should be impeached. she would probably say, I'd like to hear from these other witnesses, and that's why and I'm you know here. why? I just want to ask you one specific question about Gordon Sondland, which just came up on July 26th, saying to the president on the phone, yes, he's going to do the investigation. That's the day after he talks to Zelensky. That would appear to, to tie the aid to the investigation, he says. Uh, Sondland's testimony varied so much. I mean, I, I think it taken... Uh, together, it ended up being a hot mess. His quid pro quo claim was about uh, a meeting. It wasn't about the aid. And that was very confusing, I think, to many people who heard quid pro quo and jumped on all of a sudden their Latin officiatas. Uh, by the way, I haven't heard quid pro quo in quite a while. But uh, there was no investigation. There was no investigation. The aid was released. Um, I personally believe and have told the president this many times that you know, we needed you need Ukraine's help to beat Joe Biden as much as you needed Russia's help to beat Hillary Clinton. The way to beat Cl Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden are right there in Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden. And so it, it, 
you know, Amy Klobuchar and others saying that we need more evidence, we need more witnesses, and at the same time, her colleagues are arguing the, quote, evidence is overwhelming. Which is it? All right, so last week you had the split screen with the China deal yes. and Mexico. and USMCA. USMCA. This week the president is obviously in, in Davos. What is the plan as this continues on? Is it to put him in these positions all over the place, out and about, or is he going to be watching from the White House? How does the White House deal with day to day? You know, Brett, the president's schedule has been no different. In other words, he's been one of the most active, not the most active, energetic presidents, in, certainly in my lifetime, and I'm getting up there. In modern presidency, I mean, the accomplishments speak for itself. Three years in, the two trade deals, the two dead terrorists, the two Supreme Court justices, that sounds like two terms to me. And when the president went to Davos, it really was to talk about the economic miracle that is the United States of America right now. In just over a thousand days, the, the number of jobs that have been created, not just low wage jobs. The wage growth, the wage boost has really been in the lower half of the wage earners. It's been a blue collar boom. It's the deregulation. It's the fact that we are net exporters of natural gas and oil for the first time ever. And we're exporting that to places like Poland. And that can't make Russia happy while we're on the topic. The, the, the president's um, economic agenda on these trade deals, he said, I want bilateral trade deals. But they have to be reciprocal. They have to be fair. Why in the world were we carrying a half a trillion dollar annual debt with China, the world's second largest economy? And now we have an enforceable, we have an enforceable in writing deal with China. And the, the projections on that will be that the Chinese will buy about $200 billion in goods. They will, um, the USMCA helps our farmers, our manufacturers, our ranchers. 176,000 jobs predicted by the nonpartisan um, predictors. 76,000 on, he'll be doing both. I happen to know what